Turn to Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. So it's easier to go to destruction than go through the narrow gate. And there are many who go in by it. So he's saying, look at, there's many that are being, going through the gate, the wide gate of destruction, and not the narrow. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. So no one said it was going to be easy. Amen? Think about Jesus. What he had to go through to bring me a new life. None of us could do that. But he came to do the will of the Father, not his own. He had to destroy every one of those desires to run. In fact, he even asked, Lord, if it's possible, let that cup pass me by. He had a desire to say, you know what? I don't know if humanity and creation is worth it. That thought came. But then he said, nope, not my will, but yours, because that's what I've come to do. Not my will, but yours, because that's what, listen, you were born again, not to do your will, but his. So many people think, well, I'm born again now. I can just do whatever I want. No, you lost your life for a new one. You exchanged the old life for the new one. And that exchange doesn't stop. It continues. It's not a one-time event. To be born again is a process. That's why it says daily, daily work out your own salvation. Daily deny yourself. Daily. It's not a one-time event. It's a lifetime event. Amen? Okay. Verse 15. And he said, beware of false prophets or false Christians who come to you in sheep's clothing. Well, Christians come in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. Oh, did you ever get around those people that say, you know, you, you tell them you're a Christian, and they say, well, I'm spiritual too. Well, okay. Well, then you talk about, oh, I don't read the Bible. Well, then what are you spiritual from? Oh, just how I feel. I feel spiritual. Or you're another idiot. And deceived. Verse 16. He says, you will know them by their fruits. And what's a fruit? A desire. A what? A desire. Where there's a desire, there's a choice, isn't there? Amen. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is what? Caught down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their desires, you will know them. Does everybody get it? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So to say you're spiritual because you feel it ain't getting you in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock of foundation of Christ, or what we call the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain came and descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its what? Fall. You're going to know them by their desires. Those who hear and put into practice will produce 
fruits with good desire. They are righteous desires. Now, there's a difference between a righteous desire and a corrupt one. Does everybody understand? Again, a fruit equals a desire. When the desire comes, there's a choice that follows. Every desire is to influence a choice. There's corruptible desires that promote sin. And sin is lawlessness. Then there's righteous desires that promote life. The end result is a reward of death or life. So everything is associated, and we've talked about desire, and people don't realize your heart is the core of all desires. But unless you examine your desires, the intents of your desires, the motives of your desires, and the will of your desire, you will be deceived. This is where you got to ask yourself, who told me that? Where did desire come from? Is it desire promoting self, flesh? Is it promoting evil, wickedness? Is it promoting compromise, complacency, laziness? Or is it com promoting Christ and his character, that desire? And Galatians 6 and verse 7. Do not be what? Do not be what? deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. You know, many people forgot what they sowed. They wonder why things are happening. Things are being delayed. Things are being whatever. Because they're still reaping what they sowed. Sometimes it's quick. Listen, you can, for, you can repent from your sin and all the things that you've done wrong, but you will still reap. You're still going to reap. But God will turn that reaping into training. Amen? That means you got to cooperate or you continue to sow in the flesh. Now verse 8 is very vital. He says, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap what? Corruption. Now, when you sow to the, his, his, your, your flesh, your flesh agrees with corruptible desires. Does everybody get it? Your flesh agrees with corruptible desires. So he says, well, he who sows to the flesh, in other words, he's agreeing with corruptible desires, is going to reap what? Corruption or destruction. Also dishonor. But he who sows to the Spirit, will the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. So again, when you sow to the flesh, your flesh agrees with corruptible desires. You will reap destruction and dishonor. When you sow to the Spirit of life, you reap life and what? Honor. See, right now, the moral compass of human integrity has declined so rapidly all over the world. I'm going to say that again. The moral compass of human integrity has declined so rapidly all over the world. And it's reached the throne of God. And God is doing something about it. That's why there's a shaken and a quaken. Weariness is your enemy. Everyone say it with me. Weariness is my enemy. In 2 Timothy 3, 12, please. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow what? Worse and worse. Through what? Corruptible, through deceit. Advanced by corruptible desires. The deception is when somebody is deceived to promote a corruptible desire. 
deceiving and being deceived. But he said, you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you've learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Righteous desires is to live a godly in Christ. Amen? A godly life in Christ. So that is a righteous desire. Again, you either have a righteous desire or a corrupt one. Evil men and imposters with corruptible desires are infiltrating humanity, bringing weaknesses of their lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. With these corruptible desires, many have been taken captive through deception to promote the will and desire of Satan's evil kingdom. Everything is to promote evil. People are being exposed. Corporations are being exposed. Inhumane acts are being exposed. Because God is shaking. Because he says, I'm done. In other words, this corruptible stuff has reached the throne room of God. And he says, I'm doing something about it. And Genesis 6, in verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God or the angels saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they what? Chose. Now think about that. So these angels that put on flesh took wives or they became one flesh. Amen. Amen. In other words, they had intercourse, as many as they wanted. Does everybody get it? So you got spiritual beings that put on flesh, came into this world, and had intercourse with human beings, and changed the DNA of humanity. And their offsprings were known as giants. When those giants died, and their offsprings died, they became demons. Let's go a little further. Verse 3, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed what? Flesh. Remember, what's flesh? It agrees with what? Corruptible desires. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on, those, on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when these angels, the sons of God, came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, and they were mighty men who were of old, men of what? Renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every what? Intent of the thoughts of his heart or his desire was only evil continually. So they, they were full-blown corrupt desires constantly. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Again, they took wives, they had intercourse, as many as they wanted. He said that man is flesh, meaning co-opt, or they, because they... Uh, cooperate with corruptible desires that defile the law. Listen, they defile the laws of the creator and of creation in every level. Every intent, which is a motive of desire, in their thoughts or in their hearts was evil. Now, through a genetic implant of the DNA, as they became one flesh, producing corruptible offspring. This is the origin of the satanic rule in this earth. Satan's kingdom 
was actually destroying God's creation. But God wasn't going to allow it to go on too long. Is everybody okay? Grab hold of it. James chapter 1, 12, please. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. So in other words, you're going to be tempted to agree with a corruptible desire. For when he has been approved, he will receive the, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own what? His own desires. So remember, temptation's purpose is to create a corruptible desire. And then enticed. In other words, when it agrees. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin or the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. The, cor the conception of corruptible desires influenced by evil presence and flesh through the enticing temptations. Those are enticing temptations <laughs> that are always knocking at your door. <laughs> Amen? And in other words, they're pounding you. They're harassing you. They're, in, they're going after you. They're stalking you. Until you agree. They're looking for your weaknesses. And when you come into agreement, it brings forth the birth of the presence of evil. As the practice continues, the sin gets stronger. Until it kills us. Unless exposed and removed through repentance and cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ and the realigning of his words of promise, that person becomes lost, living outside of salvation's truth. Again, the enemy is out to create corruptible desires so that you inflict yourself. God doesn't do the infliction. And these demonic forces and demons, presence of evil, are after each and every one of us in every way they can. But we're to know how to possess our vessels. We're to know how to fight. That's why he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is not how spiritual you are. Hello? This is not how much knowledge you have. This is your relationship with the Lord. And able to discern those things by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. You must align your thoughts up and your will up with God's promises in his word. Go to Genesis 4 and verse 6. Now, God was not interested in offering up of fruits or vegetables. Hello? Hello? Things in the garden. Did you ever notice all these false religions out there, the Buddhism and all? Man, they, they all, I'm telling you. I, I, I know you heard the story, but I'm going to tell you again. I went into a, uh, to get something tailored. And uh, there was this big Buddha statue there. I'm like, what the heck? And, and the girl was in the back and Man, she, she was making coffee. And she came out with two cups. I'm thinking, man, this is a blessing. She said, bring me a cup of coffee. What a business. Well, she walked right by me. And she gave him the Buddha, the statue, both of them. And I said, that ain't going to drink it. She goes, oh, no. I said, man, I'm telling you, that ain't going to drink it. She couldn't handle it. 
I said, that thing's nothing but a jolly demon. She was like, no, no. I said, no, no. That statue is not going to drink that coffee, I guarantee it. And she just didn't know what to do with me. And I wasn't going to sit there and argue with her. I wanted to kick its head off. Federal County probably got arrested, so I figured I better not do that. But, you know, what did they offer? Listen, I've been in Haiti. I've been in all over the place. I, I've been in Cambodia. And here they're giving all, they bring flowers to this. Hello. To this thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> they're offering up. Hallelujah. It's like, but you're eating fried crickets, roaches. You're eating fried worms, cockroaches. It's like, how is this working for you? Offering up all of these flowers and drinks. People are probably bringing protein drinks to their statues. Maybe bring them health. I don't know. <laughs> they need to bring them the Bible. <laughs> That's like, how's it working for you? Have you ever noticed that all of these countries are impoverished? This country is wealthy and rich. Why? Because it was founded on Christ Jesus. Of course, we've had infiltration, and now corruption is exceedingly great. Hallelujah. Genesis 4, verse 6. So in this offering, Cain and Abel were already taught what to offer to the Lord through their parents because God showed them. When Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. What did the Lord do? He sacrificed an animal, a loaf, and gave it to them. In other words, he was showing them, this is how I'm going to accept your sacrifices. This is how I'm going to protect you. Take off those fig things, those fig leaves that you're carrying. That ain't going to work. I got a real garment for you. So he killed an animal, put the, covered them with animal skin. Actually, he was covering them with the blood. Amen? So when Cain and Abel came to offer up before God, in verse 4, it says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. In other words, he killed it. Amen? And the Lord re respected Abel in his offering. But he did not respect Cain in his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, if you obey, if you bring me the right sacrifice, will you not be accepted? Hello. Will you, if you cooperate, what I'm asking you to do, will you not be accepted? Does everybody get that? See, people just think that, oh, man, you know, I'm a believer, yeah, but I'm just going to do what I want to do. No, you're not. Don't work that way. Your cooperation is determined because the grace of God is the plan of God. And if you refuse to cooperate, then you have fallen out of grace. Hello? Verse 7. If you do well, you will not be, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, hold on a second. Sin, demons, lies at the door ready to enter and its desire is for you but you should rule over it does everybody see that but you should what rule over it now Cain talked with Abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up again against Abel his brother and he did what he killed him why? Because he did not cooperate with God. He didn't bring the right offering. Does everybody get this? 
didn't we just talk about that the end result of a corruptible desire as it grows will end up what? Killing. It will end up what? Killing. Well, that's what happened right here. If you obey, you will be protected and accepted. But if not, the presence of evil demons, demonic forces, are awaiting to enter you to fulfill their corruptible desires that promote death to humanity. That's why this happened. The end result was what? Abel got killed. Because his brother allowed that corruptible desire to enter him. And that's the presence of evil, sin. And the end result of that, because it grew, like it just didn't happen all at once. He was enticing them. The powers of darkness were trying to get to Abel all the time. Man, if you let that corruptible desire continue to chase you, to haunt you, to beat at your door, and then you finally agree with it, the end result can be death. Think about why people commit suicide. Killing yourself is not a righteous desire. Hello? I mean, don't get me wrong, there are people that are just so, so tormented that for them, peace is to kill themselves because they don't know the peace of the Lord. Some people, uh, you know, there was a point in time, I, and, and I believe that many of us have been on the death row. Didn't care whether we lived or died because of that corruptible desire. There are many people who have attempted to commit suicide. And, and I, for me, that was my only way out. I was so addicted and so bound up and whatever. It wasn't until the blood began to flow out, flow out of my body that I began to have peace. And then somebody kicked the door in and rescued me. But I wanted to die because I didn't want to live that way any longer. I lived to get high, but I wasn't getting high anymore. And I was tormented by demons and demonic forces constantly. I lived a life on death row for 20 years. And the final resort was the influence of Jesus. Rescued me. Now I live a life in Christ, exposing corruptible desires that can be destroyed so I don't go back to that life again. But without cooperation, anyone can go back at any time. Mark 13. Three. Now as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled in the return and your coming. And Jesus answering them began to say, take heed that no one deceives you. Deceives you with what? Corruptible desires. Lies. For many will come in my name saying I am he and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But you watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. And you'll be brought before rulers and kings for my sake and for the testimony of them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in, the hour, in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speak, but who? The Holy Spirit. 
Now here it is, just like Cain and Abel. Now brother will betray brother to death. By what? Corruptible desires. Why? Because the end result of that is kill. Now brother will betray brother to death and father his children and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Why? Because of these corruptible desires. And you'll be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be what? Shall be what? Saved. So endurance is needed. Evil men and imposters of Christianity even will rise up and deceive many by corruptible desires and choices with hatred, lies, stealing, betrayal, and killings. It will be brother against brother just like Cain and Abel. We must endure to the end, no matter what. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the Corruptible desires of the devil. Does everybody get that? What is the, the wow's this trickery? What's he trying to do? Trick you into a corruptible desire. That's everything. For we do not wrestle. Our struggle is not against each other. It's, that's why he says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So when you struggle, you're not struggling with each other, even though it seems to be. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In other words, demonic forces. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Our struggle is not with each other, but corruptible desires from evil influence that promote their agenda and their will. These are demon spirits. Ephesians 4, 20. It's our responsibility, remember, to make what is unseen to become seen. Isn't that what Jesus did? That's why he spoke in parables. That's why he cast out demons. In verse 20 says, but you have not so learned Christ. You have not learned the ways. You've not allowed, aligned your soul with the promises and words and covenant of Christ Jesus. Unable to put the new man on or keep him on during struggle. I will say that again. He says here, but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you had heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt. According to the deceitful what? Lust, living under satanic torment. And be renewed in the spirit of your thoughts, your minds, and your desires. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So he's saying, man, you're not able to align your soul with the promises and words and covenant of Christ Jesus. You're unable to put the new man on or keep him on during struggles or temptations. 2 Timothy 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself. From his past of emotional desires, corruptible desires, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. That's why he says, look at, flee also youthful what? Lust. Lust that promote what? Corruptible desires. You know, if it's out of God's time, it's a corruptible desire. People don't realize that. Oh, I just had this desire to do this, this, and this. And you didn't even got there yet. 
I'm going to do this, do this, and then by the time they get there, then the whole, everything's changed anyway. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Now, there may be good desires and to, with, uh, to do something good for God, but don't be led by the desire. Be led by the Spirit. Does everybody get it? Because that desire can become a corruptible desire because it pushes you out of God's will and time. There's a lot of things we all want to do for God, every one of us. But it doesn't mean it's time. Amen? Flee also useful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. That's why it's good to keep yourselves around with people that understand these things. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all able to teach. That's why everything you hear, as you take notes, you should be able to teach. Be patient and humility, correcting those who are in opposition. You ain't got no right to correct no one unless you're submitting to yourself. You can't pull the plank out of somebody else's eye when you got the national forest in yours. If God perhaps will grant them what? Repentance, so that they may what? Know the truth. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. Having been taken captive by him to do his will. Why were they taken captive? Emotional what? A corruptible desire. They agreed with it. Cleansing ourselves and sanctifying ourselves. His desires, you know, look at, when you're, the desires of the enemy is to corrupt us. Amen? We're to be cleansed and sanctified, set apart for the Lord. So that we can become a vessel of honor, not dishonor. Does everybody get it? When those corruptible desires are there, people become dishonored, not honored. Why? Because it also promotes pride. Me, myself, and I, the trinity of flesh. Jeremiah 18. In verse 1, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause hello, you to what? Hear my words. I, re I really believe God sends us to church to cause us to hear his words. But not everybody's hearing. There's too many just listening. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel, which is known as the anointing. And the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel. How many know God can turn you and make you over and over and over until we get it right? <laughs> And it says, that, so, he, so he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then a word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of true ministries, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Look at the clay is in the, hand, in the potter's hand, so you are in my hands, O house of true ministries. The instant I speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. That's warfare, spiritual warfare. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Now, therefore, speak to the men of United States and global countries and to the inhabitants of where they live, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings Good. Doing what? 
good. Repent. Remold. No repent. Disaster. Does everybody get it? So if you repent, God will remold you. If you don't repent, you're going to receive a disaster. That's why everything is shaking and everything's going on right now. The whole world, there's a disaster forming all over the world. Amen? You and I were born in, in the hands of corrupt society. We are in the hands of evil hands. We were fashioned by the world system of Babylon. But when we were born again, we were put into the hands of the Lord, refashioned and remolded again. That's why that narrow path, it's a narrow path. But we must allow God to remold us. Does everybody understand this? Again, we are in such great, without getting this understanding of the influence, so many people are falling. So many people are running in the wrong direction. So many people are agreeing with the wrong things. I want to close at Revelation 2, verse 18. And to the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Sounds like a good place. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, I want you to understand something. That right now, prophetically speaking, globally speaking, the prophetess of Jezebel and Ahab is Hillary Clinton and her husband. They hold that position in the demonic realm. Does everybody understand that? In verse 21. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality. And she did not repent. She didn't turn. Indeed, I shall cast her into the sick bed. She looks pretty sick right now, let me tell you. And those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, that means they're going to miss the rapture. That's why great tribulation is the last three and a half years. Unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death. Now she, he's talking about spiritual children that are following her. And all the churches shall know that I am he who reaches, who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say and to the rest of Thyatira. As many as who do not have this doctrine. Who have not known the depths of Satan. You know how many people do not know the depths of Satan. That's why all of this stuff is going on. As they say, I will put on you no other burden. But hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nation. They shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. As I also have received from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is where we are right now. Everybody has a choice. Remember, your choice is influenced by every desire. So you must search those. Make sure that those desires are according to God's will. Amen. There is a righteous desires or corrupt. Those that please God, it doesn't mean we can't have fun and play. Amen. It doesn't mean that we can't become wealthy and strong in the Lord. But you know, some people become wealthy for the purpose of selfish gain all the time. People use people to get what they want. 
instead of, and they become receivers instead of givers. Amen. Thank God because we're to labor unto the Lord no matter what we do. Remember, pride is a killer. You got to sow your way out of everything. Sow your way out of everything. That means you got to speak light so you eat light. But you're not going to speak light if you have <laughs> corruptive desires in your heart. You're going to speak things you shouldn't. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for prophetic insight of where we are, what's happening, and how to avoid it. We repent for every area, Lord, where there's been corruptive desires. Would you everybody stand for a moment? Hallelujah. Yes. I want you to repeat it after me. Holy Father, I ask for your forgiveness, your mercies and grace. I repent for every, every choice that I've made that's been influenced by a corruptible desire. I ask that you search me through and remove those corruptible desires and every associated spirit with them and cast them out to the pit from me. Washing me with the blood of Jesus. Filling me with the spirit of the Lord. And anointing me with wisdom and discernment. So I'm able to reject every corruptive desire from this day forth in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God.